So the woman's main pain point in life is relationships. And, and having a little sister, uh, watching my little sister in middle school, um, that was true. The main pain point in her life was relationships. Does my friend like me? Does the boy like me? Does my, you know, and, and, and now watching my older sisters, I mean, it's still, and, and just adult women, you know, in that I know is that's it yeah. is relationships is the main pain point in life. Now we're going to move to the curse on the man. Um, Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. You shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. Out of it you were taken. You are dust. To dust you shall return. So if um, toil and sorrow, if the meaninglessness and depression in a woman's life is bound up in relationships, the meaninglessness and depression um, in a man's life is mainly bound up in work. I work, I'm striving desperately to provide for my family, to have some kind of meaning, to have purpose in my life, to, to go somewhere, to create something that's, that's beautiful and, and worth lasting and worth admiring, and everything I put my hand to fails. That is a great cause of concern, depression, and meaninglessness in men. And I think um, in different ages, there are different responses that some men get puffed up, and they flaunt their stuff. And I mean, I think one is sometimes stronger and you can always see both, but yeah. sometimes it's stronger in one age or another. But I think there's a whole bunch of men um, in our age now that are just dropping out. Yeah. Either you flaunt it and make it a point of pride. And that's the red pill community. Yep. Or you guys. drop out. Yeah. And you and you waste your life. In, in your parents and you never try to go do those things and it because nah. it is a great source of pain depression sorrow meaninglessness it's like I'm gonna fail I can't get over that failure I might as well just take find a way out yeah take it easy don't try and at least and I can comfort myself in in the meantime yeah oh yeah you know, instead of mm -hmm. yeah um and either one is bad. Both of them are bad. Yeah. They are not the, what God intended for man is be fruitful and multiply, create something that grows, um, that generates profit. You put in this effort and it yields more to you than what you put in. That's called profit. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it seems like the role of a woman and the role of a man and these results, the way that they lean to one of the extremes or the other is due to the interaction with each other and the lies that each one believes that brings out those in the other ones. Like mm -hmm. you have the red pill community of men who see women as objects and a yeah at the extreme for a sure. way to get what they want, and that makes women feel like objects, which means they either want to press into, you know, liberating themselves and being like men themselves. And then on the other hand, that natural tendency to be liberated and say, I don't need a man leaves tons of men yes. lonely in their basement, not even trying to go out because they don't see that as a possibility for their lives. And you can, so exactly what you're describing is when, when you are cursed, when you do not have the mindset of God to live as he has designed, men and women are always pulling against each other exactly that i i want to be loved and cherished by a man to be taken care of that's what the woman that's the design of the woman to be loved to be cherished and to and to give to contribute meaningfully into a relationship um, to be heard to be valued um, and when a man does not feel respected or valued and their work you know i want to get that from a woman and then when the woman does not feel valued and cherished, they feel like an object, they want to get that from a man. And you're pulling at each other and not loving each other and coming together. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and the more you pull, the more the other side pulls back. And you get the Andrew Tates of the world and you get the incel community from the way that women yank on men. And then you get, you know, hardcore feminism and you get, cra you get crazy stuff on the inside. Like, 
you know, like a seductress or a feminist, you know, and they're just yanking, yanking, yanking. At that's each other. so wild to think about that the major, some of the major problems in our world stem at the root of the disunity between the purposes of men and women coming together to walk out as one. It makes me think of like the the requirements for eldership in the church being a man who is married. Oh, right. Like, yes. You cannot be an elder if you don't have your saving ally with yeah. you, which I, maybe this is a good time to no, yeah, hop that's, into that. The, um, in Genesis 1, it says, uh, God created mankind. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. them. So the image of God is not male and it's not female. It is in the unity. And there's, um, in Genesis 2, it says God made man, and then it says uh, he took of his rib. But really, that just means side. Mm. So the, the image is not just like one bone. Yeah. The image actually is um, I cut man in half and created out of the one two. I took, I took two halves and made full people out of both halves. And so literally, you are my other half. I think I think that phrase that we have preserves the meaning of the text. Yeah, is that it's not just you are a part of me, but that you are my other half, and only in both coming together, God separates to create diversity. But in the diversity, He wants unity, and only in the unity is there the wholeness again. Men and women have to work together. If they separate or they try to get out of each other a need, um, you will always. You'll always lose, and you'll end up yeah. in the curse. And you go have and, to give to each other. And it says, I will create a helpmate for you. Can you go into what that actually means? Because sometimes when we hear helpmate, we just think of 1960s wife, yeah. oh, which yeah. isn't necessarily a wrong thing, you know? But the way the, that we're like, oh, that's misogynistic or whatever, that's not what the Bible is talking about. It's not talking about a 1960s wife. What is the Bible talking about when it says, I've created a helper for you? So go go to your Bible study tool. I, I love Blue Letter Bible. Click on that word, helper, and read all the other uses. And you will find that the vast majority of other uses, that word is described, is what God is described as. A man is in trouble, and God comes as the helper. And, and in all these other, it's like rescuer, salvation, you're my savior. I was in a troubled spot that I could not get out of on my own. And so God had to do for me what I could not do alone. And God sees, so this is the picture, that God sees man in a helpless state alone. And oh man, it is not good that he is alone. He needs someone to, um, <laughs> in a sense, save, save him. him. Yeah, <laughs> really, rescue him from loneliness. And, and no one else in the, no other animal in the animal kingdom can do it. A woman has to do it to, to rescue man from his loneliness and rescue him from what he would do on his own. Yeah. And so he separates man and gives him the gift of the feminine, of, of woman. And um, so the role that God has given to women really is to be the rescuer of a man alone. And the role that man has given to woman to a woman, the gift is of leadership. And this is the controversial part. But I really do believe in my own marriage that my wife craves leadership. She wants, she wants my leadership. And I crave her input. I am, we are codependent on each other. Um, and I know that without my wife, my life would tank. Yeah. Not just like, oh, if she didn't cook my dinner. But like if I did not have her wisdom... Um, her tactfulness, her practicality, her discernment, my life would be in big trouble. She seriously has, has rescued me from so much trouble having her there because that's how God designed the unity for us to be together and not apart yeah, and not and, at odds. And that would make sense why that's a requirement for a man that steps into the role of a pastor or an elder is that they are married because mm -hmm. they are not ready they are unprepared for that kind of role, for that kind of servant role in a church body if they don't have their saving ally with them. Yes. Which is a crazy flip of what society tells you is valuable and not valuable. 
And what's wild about that is in the midst of trying to society or the world or whatever you want to call it, the demonic lies that we often believe, it's this lie that whispers in women's ears that say, you're not valuable. You're not valuable. You're not valuable. And here's a solution. Give up what God designed for your womanhood and become like the man that rules over you. Your desire will be for him. But all that really is doing is saying you're not valuable. It's agreeing with that lie that you're not valuable. Yeah. What God has designed for you is not good. It's not good enough, and it's not good. You should be the the thing that God did not make you to be. And that's so crafty because it turns out that that's exactly the thing that saves humanity. Yeah. Is you not believing that lie that you're not valuable and stepping into that role as saving ally or rescuer. Yeah, exactly. There. So Genesis 3, 15, one right before, um, I will put enmity, this is talking to the snake still, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. And I, I think that's very well known. Oh, he shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. It's very well known because it's talking about um, the proto even yeah it's talking about jesus um your offspring and her offspring and now we're we're looking forward to jesus that's but a I, very macro view of definitely what it's telling us but i remember um just i mean a couple of readings through the bible ago i clued in i will put enmity between you and the woman there is a special demonic attack on femininity and womanhood i really believe that and i think it is because when women do not play their role as the delivering ally, as the as the rescuer of mankind, everything else collapses. Everything else collapses, and the lie is always: your womanhood is not special. Your it, womanhood is not valuable. You should be a man. The deep irony of um, the 1960s sexual revolution is: don't value your womanhood. Be more like men. Don't, don't stay at home. Don't value your womanhood, the role of the women as society has labeled it. You should of go upholding out. upholding the family unit. You should go out and be more like a man. It's, not the, it's, it's never the, the end of it. it. The ironic destruction is that the end of it is never the liberation of womanhood. It's the destruction of womanhood. Go be a man. Everyone should be a man. Well, what's wild about that whole narrative is the the thought of the seductive serpent that is saying, hey, look at what you could have. And it's in opposition of what God already said. Exactly. So it's like, hey, this isn't good for you. Don't take of this tree. And the serpent goes, hey, did he really? Did he really say this? Did he really say you shouldn't do this, act like this, think like this, whatever? And 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 isn't God holding you back? Isn't he? Oh, what God what God said isn't good. He's holding you back from something great. The role that God gave for you is not good. He's holding you back from something great. And I think and we've been holding on to the the womanhood thing, but I think the same thing for manhood. You don't need a lead. Just let somebody else do it. Sit back, play your video games. It's not that big of a deal. You know what? Responsibility, hard work, going out and, you know, making something of your life, trying to work for a profit. That's that's not worth it. Leave that to somebody else. You just do whatever you want. That's not the good life. Or let your wife be the leader. Like let your she wife wants be to the do leader. it anyway. Yeah, you can stay home. You know, it's not it's not you know that important that you go work. She can work and you can take care of the kids. We might get some hateful comments for this one, <laughs> but that's the point, right? It's worth it. That's the spirit that's coming against it. You it's know? worth it. Yeah. Um, the lie is always God's design is not good enough. You probably know better. And then uh, to to the other point of the man, it's like, ah, I don't need a wife. Yeah. I can be tech billionaire. I can go and achieve what I want. I can have as many women as I want. I can use women. I don't need them. Yeah. And think about Solomon. Yeah. Debatably the richest man that's ever existed. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> Was the there's most a, depressed man. There's a line. Dude, that is so <laughs> true. That is so true. Um, I, you, this crazy when we unpack these narratives, how you see it weaved in everything on both dynamics in society today, and that's like the point of the the biblical narratives and how that's the truest form of truth that we have 
is you just you can see it in every different category it it transcends the the scientific categories or the boxes that we try to put knowledge in and says that this is base reality this is base truth this is the word of god this is living and active this is truer than true it's true no matter what is true no matter way the ways you spend it if, spin it if you want to ignore it it's true no matter what. It is and so, baked into the very, and the it will very set, good creation. And it will God set made. you free. Mm-hmm. And if you come to the knowledge that the spirit, your conscience, God is always trying to show us and the humility that comes with it, when you step into that, you're set free. And you begin to see and begin to know how to build, like you said, with your own marriage on a firm foundation on the foundation of truth, on the foundation of flourishment and life giving. You're stepping away from the desires of your flesh and you're walking in the desires of the spirit and you're liberated because of it. Truly liberated and truly a force for life. Hey, if you liked this clip, it actually comes from a longer podcast episode that Bailey and I recorded together. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the description below. Also, make sure to like and comment, subscribe. Please share this content so we can get it out to more people.